Now in this video, we are demonstrating the process of how we made a Viking longboat in woods. It's a bit of a challenge, so if you are looking for a project to push your woodworking skills, this one certainly pushed our own. And the original designs that we drew out actually had to be adapted as we went along. So that's what you can see us doing. Initially is cutting everything out. We've got all of our wood, the scraps of wood that we've chosen for this project ready. We then stick those designs onto the wood itself. However, the original drawings that I drew, these were adapted as the process went along. So we're gonna share what actually happened with you all. We're using stack cutting as a method. So put in those four dots of super glue in the corner for the oars and also for things like the sail, the two sides as well of our boat, using that to get identical pieces for constructing our long boats. So that's what we're doing in the early stages is all of the preparation, getting things ready for making our long boats. We then go across to our pillar drill and we're drilling out holes that afterwards are gonna be used for putting the oars through the sides. And also you saw us drilling a hole that was for the tail of the dragon that will be used as that sort of figurehead. So on the scroll saw, we're cutting out the tail and also the figurehead at the same time. So we're cutting that surround. We're working in some beautiful reclaimed walnuts. Our dragon then, we're actually gonna have two sides at the front and two sides at the back. So it's gonna be like a double figurehead. We use our wood carving skills just to add a little bit extra to these elements of the design because they're gonna be a key feature. And we're using those hand carving skills to shape, but also add detail and character to the designs. When it comes to to our different projects, we tend to use a variety of different skills. So our hand carving skills, scroll sawing skills, all sorts of different aspects together to produce some quite unique fusion style projects. So once we have finished carving our figureheads, for our Viking longboat, our attention goes on to the main body of the longboat itself. So we're working on the side pieces. And as I mentioned, we have stack cut them to be able to produce two at the same time. We're also stack cutting for the shields that will be added later on to the sides of the longboats. Hand sawing then is the order of the day in regards to making the piece that I mentioned that was not part of my original drawings. I was gonna have a triangular piece at the front and back, but just a small flat triangular piece. That wasn't gonna work. So what we had to do is to produce a solid triangular piece for the front and back. And the easiest way to make that was to put our hand sawing abilities to the test and to produce triangular pieces for the front figure heads and the tail of our dragon to be attached onto. This triangular piece, we've then gone across to our bandsaw and we're gonna continue shaping it, putting flat edges on the bottom corners, cutting it to the length that we then need. We then proceed back across to our workbench once more and using our Starbond super glue, we reattach the off cut to one side of that triangular piece. We use the figurehead then to mark out a line that we then bandsaw around to give us the correct shape for that triangular piece to allow us to attach the figureheads and the tailpiece of the dragon back onto. We're also taking advantage of our belt sander to shape this particular project. So we refine it as we go in, smooth it all out, a nice, finish, but also get it a nice shape for the project to proceed. Those triangular pieces, they are gonna be an important part of the design. They basically bring the whole design together. So it's important to get those right. We then go back across to the workbench where we can super glue using our Starbond super glue, the figureheads and the tail pieces of our dragon to those triangular pieces. That very much concludes the constructing of the front and the back 
of our boat. After we've done that, we have to put more of our attention onto the sides and the body of the boat. So we're using our coronet saw. We are splitting the two pieces away from one another once again after they've been super glued. We cut the side pieces to the size that we want and we are putting a groove, cutting a recess into either side so afterwards it'll allow the whole design to be slotted together. We're also doing the same on those front triangles that we mentioned, cutting some grooves out and that will allow the deck, the base and the side pieces to all be put together to form that finished long boat shape. Back across then to our pillar drill and this is part of the process of making the shields and what I've done is I've adjusted the drill bit so it's just cutting out indents and these indents will be filled with black super glue to add extra character and interest to the shields that go on the sides. We then hand carve in and around those holes that have been drilled on the side pieces. We also use a hand drill to make those pieces larger. The reason for this these holes are going to be used later on to put the oars through and this will allow the oars to go through the holes and be at a 45 degree angle. Once this part of the process is completed that completes a lot of the basic work that is required for the main body of the longboat. We then turn our attention across to making the mast and sails. As mentioned, we're using stack cutting as a method. We're also using contrasting colours to create more interest in the sail itself. So the mast we cut out of a single piece of mahogany, the sails then, we've got that darker wood and lighter wood. It's a darker piece of mahogany and a lighter coloured piece of apple. Now we want a bit of shape to our sail because it's flapping in the wind, so we use our belt sander to shape that sail into to a more rounded off figure. Back across to the scroll saw and we're using this to cut out four oars at the same time. So we've stack cut four thin pieces of lighter coloured woods. We use the belt sander to further shape and refine the oars so they will fit through the holes that we've cut out for the sides of the longboats. At this stage then we've got a lot of that basic work done so we can go back across to our workbench and we are focusing our attention on putting the longboat together. The first part of the process is to put the deck and the base of our boat onto to the front and the back of our longboat. So again we're using that super glue, Starbond super glue and the accelerant to put these four parts together. We then turn our attention to the mast and the sail and super glue that together. We're using the coloured super glue to add definition between the contrasting colours. Back across then and add the side pieces to the longboat using the Starbond super glue and clamping everything together. We go across to the belt sander and we're using that belt sander to shape and modify the long boat to create a more aesthetically pleasing design. Once we've finished with that process of using the belt sander, we have to think about adding the mast to the centre of our longboat. So we drill a hole, a pilot hole to get us started, and use the hand gouges to increase the size of that hole to be able to fit the mast through, and then super glue it down into position. To refine things further, we've got the shape of our longboat, we've got our mast, we then want to add those shields to either side to add detail and interest to the design. Now that we can see things coming together, we are adding three coats of shellac sanding sealer, refining the finish as we go, applying it in the direction of the grain and bringing out the character of the woods. After we finish doing this, we then add a finishing layer of linseed oil mixed with beeswax. Once we finish them with that process, we add the oars. As you can see, because we've extended the holes at a 45 five degree angle and that completes the making of our Viking longboats. If you've got any questions about that process, remember to get them in the comments section if you're planning on having a go at making it yourself. If you want the designs, check out the link in the description, head across to the website 
they're there for you to use for free. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when we upload another video. And as always, thank you again for watching.